Friends, let me say first how happy I am to, to be here, to see you all. I've had a very hectic trip through the United States, <clears throat> and everywhere there is this enormous groundswell of interest. I remember um, driving along, stopping the car just to have a look at uh, a few dairy cows, marvelous beasts. Um, as we were watching them, a whole fleet of milk lorries came past, adorned with all sorts of slogans of Madison Avenue, homogenized, uh, vitamin reinforced, etc. In the, in the din, I could just hear one cow saying to the other, makes you feel kind of inadequate when you see it. <laughs> <laughs> so, I think what is happening is that these, the people who really produce are shaking off this feeling of, uh, that they don't count, of inadequacy. And what uh, interests me most, and has been interesting me for quite a long time, is uh, to mobilize more and more intellectual forces to uh, create a technology for the people, the technological development of the last 50 years has gone away from the people. Everything has become so big, so complex, so costly, and also so violent that only very big corporations can handle it. And uh, ordinary people are left out. They can go around uh, looking for a job for some slot to fit themselves into. But if there aren't enough slots, then they've had it. We have now in the Western world some 15 million unemployed. Well, people say in order to get the next uh, phase of full employment, we have to invest. <laughs> and there's a certain amount of money that can be invested. But the technology is now so expensive that in many cases it costs uh, half a million, even one million dollars to create a single workplace. Well, it's quite clear that at, at, at that level of technology, the 15 million unemployed will never be reabsorbed into pro uh, productive society. Maybe they'll be absorbed into some sort of a work creation programs of, of, of governments where they will be working extremely unproductively. So we have this extremely unproductive work on the one hand, and on the other hand, workplaces that cost a million dollars. In the middle, there's very little. That's why we've been speaking about an intermediate technology, something much more normal, human, and non-violent. We have drifted into extremely violent technologies in the last 50 or so years. We use very poisonous substances. In order to be able to continue building rooms like this, where all natural light is carefully excluded, and uh, if they forget to put air into the room, then it's very difficult to survive. In order to go on like that, we are prepared to use the most violent methods of energy creation, involving even the creation of plutonium, the substance of such ghastliness that the good Lord never made it. He, he <clears throat> He knew, where, he knew where to stop. <laughs> so this is, uh, this is now a very critical time. We know we have big problems. We know we're moving into an era of uh, energy shortages and all sorts of turbulences. And uh, it's a parting of the ways between those uh, whom I call the people of the forward stampede on the one hand, and the homecomers on the other hand. The people of the forward stampede, they, they have a slogan on their flag, 
A, a breakthrough a day keeps the crisis at bay, <laughs> no matter how violent. But the homecomers, they say, now wait a minute, haven't we all gone a little bit bonkers over this whole thing? Uh, it isn't a matter of forcing the issue further and further, it's a matter of returning to a bit of common sense in our various management systems, uh, to do a bit of careful husbandry instead of uh, nothing but chemicals in agriculture. These chemicals will not be available in the longer run. It's not a matter of, uh, of freezing, but uh, building houses so that the light can enter and that the solar energy can do its best for domestic heating purposes. It's not a matter of uh, forcing all sorts of terrible issues, but uh, uh, trying to revive the economy of uh, those big parts of all the advanced countries which are outside the big conurbations. All these many, many towns, you can see it most clearly in Europe, the cathedral towns of England, they once had great strength, enough strength to build cathedrals, but everything is drained out over the last hundred years, and now they haven't even the strength to keep these cathedrals in good repair. There has been this strange movement towards the conurbations and the draining of life out of the surrounding areas. Well, that has to be stopped. That has been due to developing a technology which doesn't fit into the less densely populated areas, but only into the conurbations. Well, I think that's what it's all about, and uh, I'm glad you're all here, and you'll have a, I hope you'll have a very good conference.